Um, hopefully you can see the, um, the screen up here. If you can't, please feel free to move forward. I am Laura Ryan. I am one of the associate principals here at Waukesha West. Um, this is Leslie Abruzzo, and Leslie is one of our student counselors. And we're going to talk a little bit today about um, our academic offerings, what a um, freshman schedule might look like, and some academic supports that we provide. So thank you for taking your time tonight, and thank you for coming. Um, and we'll probably speak for about 10, 15 minutes, and then maybe if you have some questions, we'll have some time for that as well. Um, so I just wanted to Good tell you... evening, and welcome to our annual showing of Welcome to West Night. We are happy you could join us. This is just a reminder that our first of three breakout session rotations will begin at 6.30 promptly. Please refer to your handout to see which offerings take place in session one, two, and three. We would also encourage you to visit the cafeteria where you can visit with coaches and advisors and students who take part in many of the clubs, activities, and athletic programs here at West High School. Lastly, if you are interested, we also have guided building tours available right in the main lobby. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening. So for those of you who just walked in again, um, starting a little bit earlier, get you um, some time to go out in the halls and meet with the coaches and the extracurriculars. Um, I'm Laura Ryan, one of the associate principals here, and this is Leslie Abruzzo, one of our student counselors. Um, the other people that I'd like you to just kind of be aware of that are available, the adults in the building that are here to support students academically, emotionally, um, are as follows. So we have three student counselors, and you can see them. Um, up here, we divide up our students by alphabet. So Mr. Harder has the beginning, Ms. Abruzzo has the middle, and then Ms. Pollen has the end of the alphabet. So depending on what your last name is, that would be your school counselor for the four years. And they stay with them for the four years. Uh, we also have a school social worker, Kathy Callahan. Um, our social worker tends to work more with the social emotional concerns, um, tying family and community resources together where our school counselors work more with the academic planning, the college and career prep, um, any support that they need while they're here, and then also the social and emotional education, like character development of a student. We also have a school psychologist um, who is here full time, and she, her name is Sherry Fry. She does more stuff, um, observations in the classroom, diagnosis, if there was a referral for a student for special ed, she is the one who takes care of that. Um, we also have a school, and we call him our SRO, School Resource Officer. He is um, from the Waukesha Police, and he is here full time as well. His days are spent here. He obviously um, is involved with the safety of the building and enforcing the laws of, of the building. Um, our two registrars who work in the um, student services are Maureen Pre and Karen McCutton, and they'll do a lot with like transcripts and credits, put out scholarship activities. They're the ones who pretty much you ask anything and they know everything. Um, principal Ryan Pat and the associate principals, there are three of us as well. So Ms. Burton has the first part of the alphabet, I have the middle of the alphabet, and then Mr. Lemieux, who has the end of the alphabet, is also our athletic director. If you know, they kind of align with our student, our school counselors, but not exactly. So we share some of the students. So tonight, just in this brief little presentation, we hope to answer three main questions. And that is, what does a typical freshman schedule look like as you start to plan for next year? Um, and then we'll talk briefly, kind of give you the big picture of like the four years of what other offerings might be available if you're looking ahead. Um, We'll also talk briefly about what testing students do at each of the grade levels. We'll sp focus specifically on freshmen. Um, some of these tests you are very familiar with as eighth graders, but we'll talk more about what they'll take as sophomores and juniors as well. And then what academic support is available for students um, if they are struggling in one area or several areas or, um, or excelling. So the first thing that we want to go over with you is what a typical freshman schedule looks like. And before I get into this, I want to assure you that counselors from each high school are going to be visiting all of the middle schools to, one, give a presentation on what to expect when selecting classes, and hopefully they then go home and share that information with you. 
and then we come back a second time to actually help with the selection process. So please do not feel like you need to memorize this right now. Uh, we will be going over this information again with your students, with your children, and we'll have this information posted too if you have questions. Typically, our freshmen will take um, the following courses here. Uh, math, PE and Health, Science, Social Studies, and English. For families that are new to West, we have eight hours within the school day. And freshmen will either take eight classes to fill all of those hours, or they'll take seven classes, and then the eighth hour would be a study hall. And I've kind of written and mapped out on here on what this could look like. The core classes, the math, the English, the social studies, and the science, the levels of those courses are pre-selected and determined based on MAP scores and the middle school teacher recommendations. Please know, too, that all the counselors in each of the high school are open to having conversations about those levels. Um, so don't be afraid to contact us or to contact the middle school teachers if you have questions or concerns about those pre-selected courses. Okay. The other open hours then are free for students to choose what they want. Those could be a world language, a Spanish, a French, marching band, other music, art classes, business classes, and things like that. I've noticed that when parents and uh, their children will sit down and kind of map it out together, it makes a lot more sense, okay? And your students will be coming home from middle school with information about mapping this out and how to figure it out. The other courses that we have offered, you can find on Waukesha West's, uh, well actually the School District of Waukesha's <coughs> webpage. If you go to the School District of Waukesha, and scroll over the four students, you will find the high school course selection guide. So this is on the district web page. All of the courses that are offered here have a description within this course guide so you can learn a little bit more about what's covered in that class. Our main categories would be humanities, which is the English and the human geography. Here at West, we block our humanities courses. Our English and our social studies, the levels are the same. So for freshman students, they're either taking a regular English 9 and regular human geography, or they're taking the pre-AP English 9 and the AP human geography. We do that so that the teachers can team up and during prep times meet with each other, maybe combine some assignments so that in the English class they're writing a paper about something that they're learning in the human geography course. For the math portion, most students are in an algebra, a geometry, or an honors geometry, but every year we have more and more students coming into West at higher level math courses. And so we have plenty of options to offer those students if that's where they're at as well. Similar for the science students, more and more students are taking a biology, a high school biology in eighth grade. And so we do have some advanced science courses for them when they're coming in as freshmen but most students will take biology. Elective offerings are in the areas of technology education, business marketing, family and consumer science, art, music, and a lot others that you will find in that handbook. Listed over here are our AP courses, and we just put that on there so you can kind of see all of the different options available to your children as they get older. Um, I'm also the AP coordinator, so if we have any AP questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. So as you kind of think big picture, you know, if I'm really good in art, here are some art electives, AP classes, I might, you know, want to fit my schedule in my, you know, junior year, senior year, or if I'm really good at math, these are the things. Freshman year, the only AP class available to freshmen is AP Human Geography. <coughs> So I'd like to talk a little bit about academic supports. So um, it, sometimes transition into high school is difficult for students. Sometimes they are in a class that maybe there's a little more work than they're used to. 
So um, we do have some academic supports. The first one is peer tutors, who is available for everybody. Peer tutors are students who excel in a certain area, math or, or English or social studies, whatever. And they are available to tutor students during their study halls. We have some available. And then we also, in case students do not have study halls, we have them available during our CCR time, which I will talk about in a minute. It stands for College and Career Readiness, and that is our, our block of time, um, three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 7.35 to 8.05 in the morning. Um, that students can help each, each other. Um, we also have the availability, availability for students to be a tutor. So if, if your student excels in math, he or she could be a math tutor. We're always looking for tutors. We have a room, up, it's called the Quest Room. Um, and um, this is a room that's available for students who are struggling or maybe just fallen behind temporarily in a class. We assign teachers, actually assign <coughs> students. So if I know if I have a student who was out, let's say, with mono for two weeks and has fallen behind, I will assign that student to the Quest Room um, during his study hall to catch up on work. Or if I have a student who I know has just missed the last two major papers I assigned and needs some extra attention, I assign him to the Quest Room during his eighth hour study hall. And he works, we have um, an aide in there who is a certified teacher. She is very good and she works really well one on one with these students. So it's a temporary placement for students who need a little boost in order to get them to get their work completed or maybe need a little help. We also have tutors available during that time. Again, if students don't have a study hall, um, we tend to use either their lunch time or before or after school. Um, it is usually a requirement when students are placed in there um, to get their work done. We also have many students requesting to be in there because it's a quieter spot or they get the one-on-one -on -one help and they know that they just need a little focus time to get their work done. So we have some students who come to us and request to be there as well. Um, College and career readiness. We have um, two different strands, CCR math and CCR or literacy um, or reading. That is, again, three days a week, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7.35 to 8.05 for freshmen and sophomores. Freshmen and sophomores are assigned to CCR based on their math scores, their reading and math scores, and their testing, other testing such as Aspire or teacher recommendation. They are placed there if they are reading or their math skills are below grade level. So if they haven't reached the ninth grade reading level benchmark or math benchmark, then we place students in there. Again, this is a boost. They work in both math and reading. They work on computer programs that are designated to hit them <coughs> exactly where they are. So if I am reading at a seventh grade level, everything that I'm reading in my computer program is at the seventh grade level. And then the teacher stretches me further to the eighth and the ninth grade level until I can reach the reading those on my own. If I'm in math and my skills are really bad in solving inequities, um, then that is the focus, the skill that I'll work on. Or if it's, if it's really weak on adding and subtracting fractions, then that is the skill that I'm going to be working on. Students can test out of CCR, so it's not, they're not there for the entire year. As soon as they pass certain skills and reach certain benchmarks, they graduate out and they no longer have to attend. But for the most part, for our freshmen, our school day starts at 7.35. On Mondays, first hour starts at 7.35. And then Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, our CCR starts at 7.35. And first hour starts then at 8 time. On Fridays, um, for 8 or 5, uh, Friday, it starts at 8 time for, for all students because staff is in use during that time. We also have a couple newer class offerings or interventions in the reading and um, math area. We have a class taught by a reading specialist for students who are significantly below grade level. So for students who may not, it might not be enough for them to have the CCR time, just the 30 minutes, three days a week, they have an extra reading class taught by a reading specialist. Math readiness is a course in addition to their math class as well. So if they're in an algebra class but possibly struggling in algebra, they could be put into math readiness. And they have a math teacher specifically working on those algebra skills that they're working in class. Okay. Um, we also have, I know we talked about the accelerated math, so we do have, you know, depending on where your student is, if they're already in algebra or algebra two, but we also have um, 
we slow down the algebra curriculum as well for students who struggle, where we have an algebra A class for a year of just a semester of algebra if your student struggles in that math area. So testing. Uh, sometimes it feels like we're testing our students all the time, unfortunately. These are the main tests that we test we freshmen. Um, I'm sure they're very familiar with the maps testing, both reading and math area. Um, we continue that through the freshman year, two to three times a year. Um, they are offered in the fall, winter, and spring. We have gone down to twice a year rather than three times a year. So we have one coming up right now in January, early January, to see how much students have grown since the beginning of the, of, of the year. Um, and then a, the state requires us <clears throat> to do Aspire testing for all ninth and 10th graders. So ninth and 10th graders do Aspire testing. It's kind of, it's a, a test to prepare them and practice them for the ACT, and it tests them in the areas of social studies, science, math, reading, writing. Um, Sophomore year, not all sophomores take the math test. We only do it for students who are still below grade level and if they're in a math or reading CCR to see how much they have caught up. Again, all freshmen and sophomores do Aspire testing. That is kind of at the end of the year in spring. Um, and then sophomores, again, state mandated. They have to take the forward exam, which you will take as eighth graders this year. You'll take it in several areas, reading, writing, math. But in, so in um, sophomore year, you only take it as in social studies. Junior year, all students take the ACT, and it is paid for by the state. So like this year, at the end of February, there's a state <coughs> testing day. Only juniors come to school that day. They take the ACT test, and the state pays for it. So the Aspire is in kind of preparation for that. Um, one thing that is missing on here is the civil test, or civics exam. Or ci I'm sorry, mm -hmm. civics exam, and that they take junior year, correct? Mm -hmm. Junior year, um, all Wisconsin graduates have to now take the civics we use these test scores for, again, CCR placement. Um, it is one indicator for cl class level for placing students in an AP or a pre-AP or a regular class. Um, and obviously, we look for which students still need academic supports or enrichment opportunities. Um, this is just real briefly um, what kind of college readiness benchmarks that we're looking at for the MAPS test. So you can kind of think of this, too, as an eighth grader as you're taking MAPS. Um, they say that if you want to score a 22 or a 24, which they consider college and career readiness on an, AC, on an ACT, that for math, you need to be scoring a 243 or a 248 to get that 24 on your ACT. In reading, it's a little lower. The scores are 228 for a 22 on the ACT and a 230. Um, just to kind of give you something to judge that by. Now, obviously, Madison is our probably toughest college to get into in Wisconsin. They would require a 28 ACT. So this wouldn't get you, these scores would not get you into Madison. But they are considered college and career ready. Okay, so that is all that we have formally to present to you. However, if anyone has any general scheduling, freshman course offering questions, we'd be glad to answer. All right, please take the time to see uh, the departments, the teachers, coaches. <laughs> I just need a penny in on the